Hi, I'm Kevin from Springfield Leather. This is Denny from Springfield Leather. This is entitled Mallets and Hammers and Malls. Oh my. Kind of sounds like a line from uh, The Wizard of Oz, doesn't it? Well, it's not. There's so much question out there in the leather world about whether I need a plastic mallet or a rawhide mallet or a weighted rawhide mallet or a round fancy maul or a fancy heavy hammer or maybe all I need is a wooden mallet and after all why can't I just use a metal hammer well we're gonna tell you first of all these little guys here are classed as hammers they're actually pretty specific hammers this one's called a leather working hammer not too complicated the unique thing about it is it's got a rounded face so you can use it if you want to do everything from set a rivet to tap a seam flat on your leather all kinds of little things it's kind of a shoemaker's tool really um, the back end whatever you want to use that for it's there various hammers different purposes French hammer here what is this tack hammer I always called it but I always use this end on, when I was making saddles to seat the cannel binding underneath the cannel. Yeah, makes sense. It's got a lot of reach there where you can get mm -hmm. in and, and seat that. This is called a saddler's hammer. There you go. So, and it does all kinds of things. It's designed for a very specific use. Hammers have a purpose. <clears throat> but for leather tooling, more than likely, you're going to want a mallet or a mall. I am the world's most consummate, lazy person when it comes to tooling leather. So it influences a lot of my decisions. And I'm kind of cheap, too. This is the ultimate cheap. A wooden mallet. Here's the advantages of a wooden mallet. Uh, it's cheap. Here's the advantages of a wooden mallet. <laughs> it's cheap. You know it'll work. You can smack a tool on a piece of leather. It'll give you a design. Happy days. But it won't last long. If you got a group of kids, eight, ten year olds, maybe a little older, they're gonna do a little work. Half an hour each day for a few days. Wooden mallets might get you through. But aside from being cheap, there's not a lot good about it. So that's the bottom of the list. The next step up is a plastic mallet. Different weights, different sizes. So here's where the, the questions come. Why should I have a plastic mallet or why should I have a rawhide mallet? You got any thoughts, Denny? Yeah. Uh, in the first place, those plastic mallets will last indefinitely. We've got some over on our uh, uh, stamping tool table that get used 50 times a day. They've been here ever since I've been here. They look about the same as they did. Yeah. Uh, another thing, uh, they have a little bit of bounce to them. Now that, ha, let's stop there. That's the deal with a plastic mallet. They've got a bounce to them. So when you smack a tool with a plastic mallet, you may not know it, but you're going to get more bounce than you would with a rawhide mallet. Now, you probably can't tell that just from watching this, but you can take that to the bank. There is a bounce with a plastic mallet. Yeah, and you can feel it when you use it. You can. <clears throat> Most of the time, when people do leather work, they think of this. They think of tap, tap, tap. That's what they think of. And there's a lot of that in leather work today. So, rawhide mallet. Plastic mallet. You know, there's not a lot of difference in that kind of work between the two. What would you think? Yeah, I wouldn't say so. Uh, myself, 
when I first started, all you could get was a rawhide melon. You went down to the leather store and that's what they had, you know. But nowadays they've got these plastic mallets and I think if I was starting over again, I would probably get a plastic mallet and get along pretty good with it. You know, when I started leather work, uh, it was much the same. You had to either buy a wooden mallet or a rawhide mallet. Right. And I learned something. The first mallet that I got came in my little starter kit and as I happily tapped along, I noticed that I started wearing out the surface of this and I was getting little wood chips down in my swivel cuts and my beveled areas. They're hard to get out, you know. And, they aren't all that attractive. No, they don't look as good as the rest. Well, compared to my work, they didn't look. But anyway, so the happy, intelligent people at my local store told me to buy a rawhide mallet, and that's wonderful. I did. But you know what? Those things start to wear out as well. Now it takes a lot longer. They hold up better. And you don't have that bounce when you hit really hard. And by the way, that's what the difference is. If you have to hit something really hard, you'll enjoy it much more with a rawhide mallet than you will with a plastic mallet. Because you can bounce that thing and kind of cause a tool to go flying off into the sunset if you're not careful. You can also make it stutter. Yes, you can. Yes. Easier to get a, a double bounce with a plastic mallet. Now, that really comes into play if you're using an alphabet set or a 3D stamp, a large flat stamp. You take that big heavy handle, kawhack! That's when you get that bounce and you get a little stutter like Denny said. That's not good. The rawhide mallet tends to eliminate that. When these get chewed up, you can sand them off. You lose a little bit of weight, but you can sand them off and you've got some more years of use there before they wear out. Next, you've heard so much about all these professional and semi-professional leather crafters that insist on using a round maul. Boy, aren't those legendary. This is a Barry King maul. This is a maul that someone is trying to sell me. And I haven't made any decisions yet. This is a funny shaped Barry King maul. It's got little ridges here on it supposedly to grip the end of the tool better. What about malls, Denny? What do you think? Well, <clears throat> you know, whatever you start out with is what you're used to after a period of time. And, and you can keep using it forever. I never used a mall until probably 15 years ago. How long ago? Probably 15 years ago. That's a while. But since I started using it, I don't want to use anything else. Why is that? Well, the point is, especially, especially these Barry King malls, they have a lot of balance to them. Plus, a mallet has this square face on it. If you hit a tool on one side, you're going to get this. It'll deflect. Yes. You hit a tool on one side of it. You can't hit a tool on one side of it. I don't care how hard you try. It seems to guide itself to the end of the tool. Okay, so what, what you're saying is that by using a round maul, you're more than likely to hit the tool directly centered. Yes, yes. Plus the fact just that balance part. I mean, when you're, when you're sitting here with a mallet all day, you're going like this. You're hitting. Yes, you're hitting. But with one of these, it, you can just rock it with your wrist. Okay, and that takes some getting used to. Yes. But once you get used to it, it's pretty darn nice because you're just happily chubbling right along. It takes a little bit of time to get used to this, but once you do, there's definite advantages there. Keep in mind, you're doing what Denny said. You're rocking more so than hitting. When you hit, and this is okay, it's all in what you get used to, to some degree. But if you hit like this, what happens to the mallet? It deflects and goes one way or the other. 
and that's not always happy. It's not that you can't deflect with a maul, but you're much less likely. You also expend less energy. Now what's that mean for the average hobby crafter? Not much. But if you're building a saddle, and you're tooling a fender, or if you're tool tooling a, a notebook cover, a large area, what do you want to do? Sit there all afternoon hammering? Or would you rather sit there for quite some time and you get the same results with less energy. And it's not as uh, hard on your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, and those things come into play when you get old. I can tell you. The thing is though, you can get by with any of these things for any purpose. Some are better suited than others. Yep. You know? It just depends on what you have. No one has to buy a $60 mall. That's true. Why do they want this big thing? Uh, if they're uh, like punching. Holy cats. That would sure set that. <laughs> no kidding. And that looks good. Yeah. And you know what? That doesn't take a lot of energy. All you have to do is let it fall on it. That's nice. It also works well for a heavy duty end punch, slot punch, hole punches. Leather crafters that have been doing this for years and that have generally accumulated a little bit of money they usually have one of these around for that purpose. When you punch a slot, you want something that's going to go called whack. But all of this being aside, whether you use a funny shaped round maul, whether you use a lightweight round maul, a heavyweight round maul, a yellow one, a rawhide mallet, a wooden mallet, plastic mallet, everything comes down to just a couple of things. Number one, you got to have a piece of granite to work on. Number two, your leather has to have the right moisture content in it for your tools to work properly. And number three, you need to be using a good piece of leather. If you're using a piece of leather that's not happy, maybe it's an import piece of leather that's been plated too hard and won't accept water readily, maybe it hasn't been tanned as nicely as a Herman Oak piece of leather, you're just not going to get the best results no matter how much you pay for that fancy mall. So there you go. Mallets and hammers and malls. Bye.